Hello everyone, Crash here, this is RTA Motorsports, and today we're gonna to be talking about the HP Reverb G2 and an important update that just came down the pipeline. Here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. All right, everyone, if you have been with me for a while, you would know I'm a huge VR enthusiast, huge VR fanboy. I have a bunch of headsets over there, and I have reviewed every headset that we have tried. Definitely check them out if you haven't seen any of my reviews yet. I'm gonna pin this video here, the review for the HP Reverb G2, so that way you can check it out if you have any questions. Hopefully I'll answer any questions you may have in that video. If you have any additional ones, feel free to ask them. I even do some through the lens shots on that video. HP Reverb G2, out of all my VR headsets, is honestly one of my favorite headsets. It's an absolute beast of a VR headset. And to be honest with you, on that video, I do get a lot of questions lately saying, well, where is the headset? How come you never use the headset? Do you even VR, bro? And the truth of the matter is, I have very limited amount of time to actually enjoy VR right now, unfortunately. So whenever I do, it's in the Oculus Quest 2. That headset is just super convenient. It's amazing to me how many things you can do with that headset and really convenience plays a key role right now when you have very limited amount of time. Now, just to recap on my system, because it's gonna play a key role here. Um, I have an AMD Ryzen 3900X, an X570 motherboard, and an NVIDIA RTX 3090. Now, unfortunately, and it seems to be the X570 motherboard group seems to have a lot of this issue more than anyone else. Although there are other groups who are affected by this as well. Uh, we have huge connectivity issues. Now in my review, I do cover this a little bit in, in the review, so definitely check that out. Uh, but to be honest with you and not exaggerating, sometimes it takes me a half hour or I just quit trying to connect this headset to my system. I do have PCI Express add-in cards, USB 3.0 cards, USB 2.0 cards. I have external USB. It's just, I, I try, try every single USB port that I have. I have tons of peripherals. So unplugging and replugging everything in to try to find a USB port or the USB port of the day that decides to work with this headset is absolutely ridiculous sometimes. Back of the X570 motherboard, we have a USB-C port that for a lot of people like me, it goes unused. And <laughs> unfortunately, this has a USB-C on it. It does come with also uh, an adapter so that way you could use a normal USB, but the USB-C port on there, if you plug it into the back of the X570 motherboard, it just doesn't work at all. Now. A lot of the times with this headset, I have attributed it to Windows Mixed Reality. And honestly, it made me kind of very angry at Windows Mixed Reality. I, didn't, I never really blamed it on the hardware, but HP has come out with a new cable for the HP Reverb G2. And they say supposedly that will fix all of the issues. I've seen quite a few videos where this has fixed a lot of people's problems and I'm kind of hoping the same goes for us. And if you are new to this channel, just know, crash me. <laughs> I I always have the weirdest or the craziest issues uh, when it comes to almost anything that we purchase or buy for this channel. So I have high hopes, but I am not 100% sure this is actually gonna work for me to be honest with you. So if you have a headset that is covered on the warranty and you are having this connectivity issue, I highly suggest you contact HP, try to get this new cable and see if that fixes your issue. Or if you have the headset and it's not covered under warranty, but you need the new cable, uh, you can actually purchase it through their website. They have it for sale on their website. It's commonly out of stock. Just keep, keep watching out for it and you should be able to find it there. But let's unbox this here. I haven't even unboxed this yet. I kind of hope the cable's in there because this, is, <laughs> this would be a lot of work. Just find out it's the wrong item shipped to me. All right, so let's let's open this up. And again, the cables that they um, they give for this VR headset uh, are six meters long. Uh, commonly, VR headsets are not six meter long cables, uh, but these are six meter long cables. So very long cables. And you can see there, there we go. So we got 
looks like the cable, the connector, everything in a nice little bag. Let's get this box out of the way. Looks like an anti-static bag that you normally get PC parts in. Let's slide this out. Cable feels about the same gauge as the old one. Feels just as stiff as the old one, which, you know, it's not too bad. It's just pretty acceptable for a VR headset cable. The breakout box looks different. We're gonna take a look at the two there. So let's see what they did here. So the end, of course, that's gonna be the same end. This is the side that actually connects to the VR headset itself. And we'll go over connecting that. I almost spilled my coffee everywhere. Oh, oh. All right, so we got the cable unpacked and it's pretty interesting. So I don't see the adapter that we got with the last headset. I mean, as far as the last cable goes. So what we have here is we have the cable that connects to your VR headset. We have the display port adapter or the display port connector there. Uh, and then just a USB-C. So they're pretty confident, I guess, that it's gonna work with USB-C. Although I still do have the adapter that came with the VR headset, as far as if we need to still plug it into a normal USB port. Uh, but you could see here the breakout box is quite a bit different in size. Let me try to hold this up to my my B camera there. And you can see this is the new one here and this is the old one. You can see just how much larger that new breakout box is. And on top of that, it looks like we now have a power port uh, right down there. You can kind of see that a little bit there. I mean, a power plug, a power, power button. <laughs> I guess I couldn't remember the word button, but we have a power button. Uh, it seems to be a power button. I'm not really sure if that's exactly what that is, but I can't see it being anything else. But yeah, it looks like a, a power switch there. So let's get the headset on the table here. And we'll get it ready for teardown. So we're gonna just pull that face gasket off. It's just magnets there. Very, very easy and simple to do that. And the old cable here, let's just pull straight out. And there we go. So we already release that from there. And you don't wanna remove the cable more than you need to. Um, I've heard a lot of reports of some people actually breaking their original cables by unplugging and replugging them in. Don't do that. Once you plug it in, leave it alone. <laughs> do yourself a favor. Just don't touch. All right, so this new one here, let's just gonna go right in the back there, top left corner, just go straight in. And there you go, you hear the click, you know you're in. We're good. Let's get that facial interface material back on. All right, let's jump in the rig and let's see how this works. All right, so we're inside the rig right now. I do have it plugged into the USB-C port and the display port. Let's see, I'm gonna try that new power switch that it has built in. All right, still saying connect your headset. Oh, all right, and look at that, it says ready. Never have I ever had it say ready with plugged into USB-C. Normally it would give me an error right there. Let's get the headset on, let's see what we see inside. Yeah, there it goes, it's working right now. It says look side to side, then down at the floor. And there we go, we're inside Windows Mixed Reality. I can't believe it, plugged into USB-C. Finally, I have a reason to use a darn port on the motherboard, and it just worked. All right, everyone, so we're in iRacing right now, and we're in the Porsche 911 GT3R, and everything looks really good. Resolution-wise, Everything is super clear. 
uh, very well defined. The only problem that I'm having, I'm not sure if it's coming through this video, and this is an iRacing specific issue, is the textures are really, really odd right now. Like everything is like super muddied for whatever reason. I have all my settings on high for the most part. It's just the, the textures aren't coming through as far as, you know, how everything looks. So like all the banners, the dashboard's a little funky. Uh, but the overall resolution of everything is really, really good. So we're gonna test at the Nurburgring here. If you know how to fix the texture issue, definitely let me know. I couldn't figure out a fix. I even reran the graphics config. Didn't work. It's not the fault of the headset. I think I've had this issue in the Oculus before too. Uh, maybe like a Steam VR issue, I don't know. But overall, I do gotta say I'm, I'm very happy this just works the way it should. It just works. And now we're using a USB port that I haven't been using. That USB-C on the back of the X570 motherboards is finally getting used. And it just worked. Look at this. I kind of miss how clear and how good the contrast was on this Reverb G2 versus the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, the black levels are definitely better on the uh, G2 here and the colors are better. Resolution's better, FOB's better. Just you have that cable tied to the side of your head, which is okay. Because again, my biggest gripe with this headset was just getting it running. Sometimes I just would run out of time, literally, and not even be able to race a session just trying to get the headset working. And now, with this new cable, we even have a power button on it so we could just turn the headset off right from the breakout box and never have to unplug it. That is huge. Yeah, this is great. This is... Ooh, almost lost it a little there. Crab walk across the track. This is the way it's supposed to be. So everyone, if you have the HP Reverb G2 or if you've been researching VR headsets and you've been holding out because you're afraid of some of the issues that may have been reported with Ryzen CPUs and X570 motherboards, I'm here to tell you that is no longer an issue at all. Uh, if you buy any of the new HP Reverb G2s, I was told that they're gonna come with this new cable with the new breakout box already. And if you already have one, uh, contact HP, see if it's still under warranty and if you could get this covered and get one sent to you. Um, or you could purchase one directly from their website if they have it in stock. But again, uh, I would get on it as soon as possible because it did take me a while to get mine due to stocking issues. Uh, but they did get it to me. So it's finally here. There's gonna be more VR content on this channel because I'm no longer gonna be upset about not being able to run one of my favorite headsets that I own here. So everyone, stay safe, stay happy, enjoy sim racing, get outside, do what you gotta do. And everyone, have a great day, and we'll see you all next time. Woo! Ah! Stay in there. There we go. There we go.